Hi, I'm Eric Paulson, and this is our new 400 megahertz NMR spectrometer with an automatic sample changer. And I'm going to show you how to load your sample into the 7620 automatic sample changer and set up your experiment on the system. To load the sample, what you want to do is come over to the sample changer and press the access request button. When you do this, it's going to unlock the doors up here. After you press the button, you should hear the sounds of the, in, the sample changer responding and you should see on the display here it says door unlocked. You should not try to open the door before you do this. In this case the door is unlocked so we can open the door and then we can go up the ladder to load our sample. Now that you're up on the ladder this is what you should see on the sample changer. You could put your sample anywhere in the open positions for the sample changer but do not put them where you already have a sample and don't put them under the arm of the sample changer, which you can see indicated where there's a red light here, because this indicates the position where there's already a sample that's inside the magnet. So for example, we can put it in this spot, which is indicated as G4. Now that your sample's loaded, you can come down from the ladder, and you need to make sure that you close the door. You know that the door is closed because the system will indicate that it's locking the door. You should hear the pin lock on the door. And once this completed, the robot will check that everything is in the right place. Now you can go over to the spectrometer and set up your experiment. Okay, now that you've loaded your sample into the sample changer, you should go to the NMR host computer to set up your experiment. When you go to the instrument, you should see a screen that looks like this. This number one indicates the next available spot in the sample changer that the instrument expects you to use. Although you can put your sample into any open slot in the sample changer and it should work. Next, you can log in and you're going to use your net ID and the associated password to log in. And you should see a screen that looks like this. First thing you need to do in almost every case is to click on new study. This will set up a new template for you to set up your experiments on the sample changer. So when you click new study, it should change the screen and give you a representation of the sample changer. Now, the sample changer has two bays of samples. There's a left side, which is indicated as zone one, and a right side, which is indicated as zone two. They're numbered from one through 96, but in each side, you can see the coordinates H1, H2, for example, C3, whatever. Just make sure that wherever you put your sample in the two sides of the sample changer, that you remember where it is and that you add your experiment to the appropriate location. So for example, if I put my experiment into F5 on the right-hand side, then I need to click this spot right here in order to set up my experiment. You should see the little rotating image here indicating that that's the active sample that we're setting up the experiment on. Next thing we need to do is we need to put in a sample name. If you don't, it will cause problems later and it may screw up the run for other people. So every sample needs a sample name. Next thing you need to do is you need to put in the solvent. There are some common solvents here and then if you use this pull down list or push on the other button, it should give you to the full list of possible solvents. In this case, we'll just use chloroform. These other fields, such as concentration, notebook, page, email, and comments, you can fill out if you wish, but they're not necessary. Last thing we need to do is to choose the experiment that we want to add. Now, this list may be changing as we go forward, but there are a few tabs here. There's some common experiments. Under liquids, you'll see a whole lot of experiments. So, for example, under standard 1D, you can see many different standard 1D experiments. Calibration you should not normally use, that's for technician only. So we'll just do a common proton experiment. Okay, so now that we're, we've added these three things, we've identified the location, the sample name, the solvent, and the experiment, we could just click submit and run it as we want by default. However, if we wanted to customize the experiment, what we should do before we click submit is we should double click on the experiment and this will change the screen to allow us to edit the experiment parameters. So for example, if we wanted to change the number of scans from the default number of eight listed here 
to a larger number, we can just pull down and use a different number of scans. Likewise with the relaxation delay, the pulse width angle, etc. There are additional parameters available under this acquire tab here on these other options. So if we go to acquisition, we can see then we could adjust the spectral width in Hertz or PPM, could change the acquisition time, again we could edit the number of scans, and so forth. No matter what changes we make, if we want to save the changes, then we need to click on the Save Changes button. If we want to discard the changes, then we could use the No Save button. In this case, we'll save the changes, and you'll see that the display reverts back to the standard display that we saw before. If we added an experiment unintentionally, say we added a carbon, for example, and did not mean to, we can get rid of it by dragging it down to the trash bin down here, and it should disappear. Also, if you wanted to add an experiment to run at night, you could change the tab here to be nighttime instead of daytime. And if you wanted to run a priority sample, you could check this box to make it a priority sample. There is a limitation on the number of priority samples that you can run. In this case, we're just going to run a standard daytime experiment. So once all of that has been set, then we can click Submit. And you'll see the status of the experiment has changed. The color indicates what's happening. So when it's yellow, then it's in the queue. And now that it's purple, it went through blue. And now that it's purple, it's actually running the experiment. You'll see some uh, indications here what's going on if you wanted to watch it. But normally, at this point, you can just click Log Out and come back after your sample is finished. Now that you've submitted your experiment, the sample changer will automatically put your sample into the instrument and run your experiment. Here you can see a view of the sample changer in operation. First it's going to remove the previous sample from the instrument and put it back into the tray. Next it's going to pick up your sample and load it into the instrument. After your experiment is finished, the sample changer will automatically return your sample to the tray.